Hello everyone and welcome to our Revit blog. My name is Jim Cuervo and I am a senior trainer and tech support specialist for digital drafting systems. We have been reading many questions about creating a wall that conforms under a spiral staircase with a tight turn radius. Initially, we had two examples of typical solutions. In our first example, it involves the use of a void sweep, which is right here. Okay. As we can see, it's only cutting a little sliver of the wall. Let's take a look and see why. In Edit Place, selecting that particular void, we can see that the initial profile is banking, but so is the ending profile here. It's banking. And in doing so, what it's really doing, it's avoiding most of the wall, as we can see here in 3D. That's why we have just a sliver and most of the wall is actually then not cut off. We'll also notice that in doing this, even if we create a, a wider um, profile to end and start with, it still won't cut it properly because of the banking. So this isn't going to always work. It does work though on a more sweeping curves, curve of spiral staircases rather than a tight spiral, spiral staircase. And take this one off, as we just realized it doesn't always work. In our second example, we have a reference plane drawn in that angles out more or less in the same um, angle as the spiral stair staircase, and then we have our wall attached to it. If we move the particular reference plane up or down, we'll notice that our wall is actually going to do ex move to meet exactly where that reference plane is, is. But by looking at this very example in 3D, we'll notice, first of all, it's not quite cutting everything properly the back end of the curve and the front end of the curve are following the same angle, which is erroneous because the back end is actually higher. We'll also notice a second anomaly, which is the wall itself is cut on an angle. So it gives uh, the wrong impression of what's going on. This, this isn't, isn't going to work either, as I said before, because in reality we have one angle here, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4, and possibly an even angle 5 where we'd have to follow it. It's not going to work. We've developed a third solution, though. And it is to go to the Architecture tab, and then in the Build panel, go to the Components, drop-down list, and select Model in Place. Once you've selected that, you get a dialog box that allows you to select what family category this is going to be assigned to. It's going to be assigned to our wall family category and say OK to that. Once done, we get a secondary dialog box that asks us to name it. So we'll go ahead and say it's a wall spiral stairs inner radius. As a name, I try to use a name that is easily recognizable as to what it is used for. I'm going to say OK to that. And it gives us the form tools. From the form tools, we're going to select swept blend. Once we select the set swept blend, the first thing we want to define is the path. So we'll go over to level one and select sketch path. We'll use the three point arc or the start end radius. The start of my path is going to be this inner arc uh, starting point and the end is going to be at this side of that same arc. Then I go ahead and define my radius to be along that curve. Select it and click green check mark to finish the path part of the swept blend. Now, because this was pick one, this is going to be defined as select profile one. Because this was the second pick, then obviously then it becomes the selection of profile two. We will start with Profile 1. 
First, you come over here to the work plane, and in work plane, we go to the viewer. This opens up a viewport in which we can then say select profile one, which is what we're going to be working on, and say edit profile. Once there, it gives us this dialog box that is going to ask us which specific view you're going to be starting with. So we're going to say in the 3D view and say open view. If, as you notice, it immediately puts us in the plane that allows us to work on, on profile number one, which is this one. And a little later on, we'll work on profile number two, which is this one right here. Let's go ahead and define profile one by first arc rotating so we can see the stringer that we're going to use as a basis for our sweep shape that being this little rectangle right here. We go set rectangle, define it to be this shape by tracing it in this fashion, and click on it. Now it's important to take notice that this profile starts on the right side of the uh, reference planes. We need to take into consideration then because this is sweeping right to left, the ending profile is going to be on the left side of the reference planes. We'll see exactly what we're talking about in a second. Now that I've got this reference plane drawn in and I'm satisfied with it, I go to say modify, select all four lines in this fashion and say copy to the clipboard. Once it's copied to the clipboard, I can then say I'm finished with the definition of profile one and select profile two. Once again, edit profile and it takes us right back so we can then arc rotate into position and ready to draw our item. We're going to head, go ahead and go to the clipboard and paste from clipboard. Now, I'm going to place it here, taking into consideration that I do have to move it and place it on the left side based on the same reasons that I gave you a moment ago. So we'll go ahead and select them all again. Go ahead and move using this endpoint here that is equal to this little point right here and click on it and now it's moved into position because we're able to see the top of the stringer that we're using as a basis for our shape we can then define the top of the stringer to be our new top end of our profile by picking this little piece right here now we've got our line there. We can then do the following. Pan down to here on the bottom of the profile that we're defining at this point and selecting this little piece right here by select modify and picking it and deleting that. Now it's just a matter of cleaning it up by using the trim extend tool, which is we're going to trim and extend to this point this line and to this line we're doing the same to the this point here okay now we've got our profile one and profile two defined we go ahead and say profile two is defined green check mark turn off the viewer all profiles are defined all paths are defined for the swept to blend and we go and say green check mark again to complete swept blend. As you can see, the result is following exactly the contour of our wall. And in this way, we have now created a swept blend that conforms to the inner radius of a tight spiral staircase. I hope you've enjoyed our blog. Hope to see you soon. See you next time.